Good Monday afternoon, guys. My name is Jerry Miller. Welcome to the I Love Seville show. Good to be with you live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth for the country and the world on the I Love Seville network. We woke up to some positive news with hospitalization and COVID cases now down across the United States. We'll talk about that on the I Love Seville show. We'll talk devil's backbone, COVID closed, not permanently, but temporarily. The Top Golf in Richmond just sold to an Arizona company for $32 million. $32 million for the uh, Top Golf in Richmond, an Arizona company. UVA Hoops, again, under Tony Bennett, appears to be peaking at the right time. I mean, it's the MO with Coach Bennett and the, the Virginia basketball team. You take this team when they faced Gonzaga, and you take the team that's going into the matchup against Syracuse tonight at 7 o'clock, it, it is a completely, completely different ball club. We'll talk about that on the program. We'll welcome Joe Kuhn to the show. Um, Joe Kuhn, a friend of the program. We'll talk some cannabis. We'll talk some hemp um, and how it pretends to, pertains to Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Giddy up and get ready, whether, you're, whether you want it or not. Cannabis, hemp, CBD, Local is going to become a reality. You're going to have big box players in this market that have retail operations from a cannabis standpoint, flour, edible, um, gummies, candies, butters, something you smoke, something you roll, something already pre-made for you, brownies. You, you're going to have the big box brands just like you do in every other industry and the big box brands may be first to market because they have the policy in place, they understand the legislation, they're working with the local governments, they have the cash to expand. So at the end of 2023, early 2024, we know the Virginia legislator is pro-weed. It's been pushed back a little bit to 2024. This just happened this past week. The governor's pro-weed. The best thing that's ever happened to cannabis is COVID-19 and budget shortfalls. You'll have big box brands be the first to market, opening retail locations in class A storefronts like Barracks Road Shopping Center, like Stonefield, and like Fifth Street Station. And the first to market the big box brands. They will gain market share because people, the, the, the demand is there. And right now the marketplace is kind of like a, a gray, illegal marketplace. Okay, and in end of 2023, early 2024, the big box brands will, will explode, and then you'll have local brands come to market. The Almeral Cannabis Companies, the, the, the Schuyler Skunk Company, the, uh, the, the Earliesville White Widow Company, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Belmont Blunt Company, the, the, the Charlottesville Cannabis Company, just like beer and just like wine. And when the local brands come to market, they will immediately erode market share from the big box players because Charlottesville, Virginia prides itself in supporting local, capitalizing local, and putting tailwinds behind local so these brands can boom in popularity. I've predicted so much correctly on this program, and that's why you watch. This will come to fruition in Charlottesville. You will have an entire economic ecosystem and supply chain built around cannabis, just like breweries, wineries, and restaurants. You'll see uniform, companies supplying uniform. You'll see companies uh, supplying fertilizer. You'll see people cutting and clipping. You'll see bagging, graphic design. You will see signage, advertising agencies focused on this industry. Get ready. We'll take a deep dive with someone from a local standpoint that is chopping at the bit. And Joe on the program at about eight minutes on the show. Other things I want to talk about today on the program, I see five different states watching the show. I see Northern Virginia, Richmond, Charlottesville, and all of Central Virginia watching live across social media. First, I want to talk positive news, then I want to talk COVID-19. On February 12th, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., the I Love Seville Network, me in particular, we created a concept for a telethon. And it happened in the midst of a live show. I said, you know what? I'm going to create a telethon. We're going to raise money for affordable housing, and we're going to choose here at the I Love Seville Network to partner with the Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust. 
We're going to utilize our influence and our reach to see if we can raise $150,000 for the land trust to help them. We are helping them buy land in the city of Charlottesville where they can erect houses for people that need homes to live in um, at, at economic thresholds otherwise they could not reach. Basically, folks that can't afford to live in Charlottesville, we're going to do a 12-hour telethon to raise $150K, $50 from 3,000 people, to buy a piece of land through a, a, a land trust and help people in this community get a place where they can sleep, their kids and their sons, moms and dads, where they can sleep. It's the 12th of February. I ask very little of you guys, the viewer. I bust my ass on this network, creating content and showcasing people in this community that are doing positive things. It's a lot of hard work. On the 12th of February, I'm going to call in the favor, and I'm going to ask 3,000 people to give 50 bucks so we can, the Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust can buy land so people in our town can put their head on a pillow and have warmth during the winter. Understood? February 12th on a Friday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I will be here connecting with you. Now let's talk phase one of this vaccine. There's an article from Charlottesville Tomorrow, if you can put that on screen, Judah. It might be in your inbox. You can also find it on charlottesvilletomorrow.org. And it's about phase one. Um, it's the second headline down. The headline from Charlottesville Tomorrow, if you're in phase 1B, you might be waiting months for a COVID-19 vaccine. As of Friday, more than 35,000 people who qualify as part of phase 1B had signed up to receive the vaccine from the Blue Ridge Health District. Here's the crappy part. The health district is getting 3,000 doses uh, a week. So we got 35,000 people as of Friday signed up for phase 1B. I can assure you that number is higher now that Saturday and Sunday and half of Monday have transpired. So as of Friday, 35K have signed up for 1B. 3,000 doses are coming in a week. See the problem? The demand is way surpassing the supply. Obviously, the previous administration was, was only focused on coming up with the vaccine and not an actual plan to roll out the vaccine itself. Now that the current administration is, is, is left with the collateral damage and the fallout of trying to roll this damn thing out. The fact that these, this vaccine, this, this modern marvel of medicine, has not been rolled out quickly and put in and injected into people's arms is a damn shame. It's a damn shame. I don't think we are truly going to be out of this until maybe the end of this year. Optimistically, at the end of last year, I thought summer was going to be the turning point. Now, I, I, I'm, I don't even believe it anymore. It's summer. No one thought the logjam of vaccines getting in people's arms, this bottleneck would happen. Did you? I didn't. I thought the vaccine was the hard part, not getting it into people's arms. It, tr it turns out to be the opposite. Now, what does that mean to you? What does that mean for Charlottesville? What does that mean where we go from here? Well, it, it means more uncertainty. It means more places like Devil's Backbone are closing because someone on their team got COVID. Put that on screen. Temporarily not permanent. It means if you're the wedding industry, the music industry, the hospitality industry, the tourism industry, the restaurant industry, the bar industry, if you're a musician playing for 100 bucks and a couple of pints at Miller's and maybe some tips from the crowd at 1.45 a.m. at last call, it's more of not sure what's going to happen for you guys, for all of us. We're all in the same damn supply chain. It's confusing, bewildering, frustrating, downright demoralizing and depressing, downright disturbing to know that the place you can get injections, the Kmart on 29, is not open seven days a week and not working around the clock. It's downright disturbing, demoralizing, downright dejecting that we have a shortage of people putting needles into people's arms. How about the shortage of needles themselves? Did you know we have a needle shortage now? We have a needle shortage. 
So we have this badass vaccine, uh, a modern, a marvel of modern medicine, this vaccine. We got a Pfizer, we got a Moderna, we got a Johnson & Johnson. Yet we don't have the infrastructure to get it in people's arms. Patience is what the Blue Ridge Health District has asked. Patience is what the governor's office has asked. Patience is what health districts are asking of Americans from Charlottesville, Virginia to Los Angeles, California. My friends, it is now January 25th. I think we've been patient since the first week of March in 2020. Have we not? I have. I certainly have. All right, Joe Kuhn coming up. Keith Smith in a matter of moments. Um, one more item out of the notebook before we get to Joe. And Joe's in Whitehall. Um, so if, we're not, if, we're, if the connection's a little shaky with Joe in Whitehall, we'll get him via phone on the show. Um, Joe, I'm sending you a text right now. I'm letting you know 60 seconds we're reaching out to you. Um, Top Golf, Richmond, get it on screen. So Top Golf in Richmond, the Richmond location of Top Golf just sold for 32 million. Yes, you heard me correctly, 32 million. The closest Top Golf we have, a firm in Arizona bought the company, the Top, the Richmond Top Golf location. It's a 55,000 square foot driving range and entertainment facility at 2308 Westwood Avenue. It was acquired late last week for $32.3 million. Henrico County records show the buyer was Arizona-based Fundamental Income Properties, a real estate investment firm that focuses on single tenant net lease properties. Top Golf, this particular location was built for 25 million. The value of the lease made up the difference. So the property was built for 25 million. And the Top Golf 20-year lease made up the difference. 32.3 million minus 25 million. They value that lease at 7 million point three. That's a hell of a lot of freaking money. 32 and change for a location outside Richmond and Henrico, the closest top golf we have. And it shows you that, that experiential experiences, especially outside experiences, are booming in popularity. I'm gonna relate it to sports. You know what's killing a sport that I love? Racquetball. You know what's killing a sport that I love? Squash, COVID-19. Why? Because you're in a box with one other person if you're playing singles, or, or three other people if you're playing doubles. And you're in a box, you're breathing, you're sweating, you're getting close to each other, and you're bumping each other. COVID-19 is killing racquetball and squash. You know what COVID-19 is putting tailwinds behind and booming in popularity? Pickleball, platform tennis, golf, tennis itself, hiking. Why? Because they're all outside. How do you get within six feet of someone that's swinging a racket, that's creating a radius around them, that's a racket with a metal thing? How do you get within six feet of somebody that's swinging a golf club? COVID is killing businesses and activities that do not offer experiences, in particular, ones outside. Questions, comments, concerns, put it in the feed. Questions, comments, concerns, put it in the feed. Joe, I'm reaching out to you as we speak. If this doesn't work, we will go via phone call. We have them on the line. Hey, guys, how are you? Joe, you're looking sharp. Can you hear me? What's the good word? All the words are good. It's nice to see you, Jerry. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. Please remind me of uh, your beautiful better half's name over here sitting next to you. This one? This yes. is Leanne. This hey. is Leanne, lovely wife. I love Thank it. You. I love it. All right, nice to see you guys. All right, I'm going to get out of your way. This is a family business. Introduce us to it, please. you got five states watching and a lot of folks in the Commonwealth right now. Okay, great. Well, we are Avermile Hemp Company, which is now called Avermile Cannabis Company because of the recent changes in the federal and state laws that are rolling our way. Um, we provide CBD products for the masses, including smokable products, edible products, um, lotions, bath and spa, and we also have a sister company called Virginia Cannabis Services, which handles any requests or uh, assistance that farmers need in the Commonwealth to help them, you know, grow 
and move forward in the hemp industry. Um, COVID, I, I said it on the show, COVID has put tailwinds behind what you're doing. Um, I've seen your vision for years. I've always thought you were first to market. You were on the cutting edge. COVID-19 has certainly amplified and magnified and driven momentum behind your efforts. Open-ended question, how has COVID um, put tailwinds behind your entire industry? Well, I believe that since a lot of people are stuck at home in the most part, you know, they're into trying new new things and products, especially for relaxation, calming effects, and self-care. And so I think that has a lot to do with the tailwinds that we received or that we're getting continually. Um, plus, we do still do, you know, COVID-safe markets and such. And so when people can get out, they're very happy to see us, you know, as a new company in the area, again, promoting self-care. Mm -hmm. um, We've also been, um, we've also added things like um, touchless delivery options and shipping for customers, which allows them to be able to connect with these products and um, explore what works, work, what, what works best for them, but in a safe way um, that kind of keeps, keeps all of that intact for everybody. Right. Awesome. That's super dope. Super dope. Pun intended right there. I love these guys right here. Um, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw this to you on top of that. Every municipality is, is, is looking for money. Their budgets are in shambles and, and, and cannabis is offering a freshly taxable product. Um, the governor's office was talking about at the clip of 30%. I think of revenue here, educate us here. Can the, can the, can the model work if the man is taking a third of everything that comes in? Well, if you look at other states currently, they all they all pretty much tax around 30 percent, give or take a little bit. Um, and it does work. And it works, I think, because even though it is a higher tax rate than anything else on the market today, those taxes always go directly to the states for things that are needed, like education, schools, roads, you know, stuff like that for the community. So, you know, for a lot of people, yes, it is a high tax rate, but it, those taxes go to things that most of us want you know, or need in our communities, especially around here, like helping schools get back on their feet after COVID, fixing our roads, you know, helping our police and fire and other, you know, first responders and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's, I think it's definitely doable because of what those taxes go to. And it makes it that states can do, do a better job of implementing their own, you know, ideas and projects without needing the federal government, which tends to be kind of a pain. And I think that um, strengthening and investing in our local infrastructure is a strength in our in our locality. I really do. Um, so I'm excited to see that priority continue to be put in those valuable places. And we also think that you know the the options are endless. Not to also really put a valuable piece in about how sustainable hemp and cannabis are as products that naturally lower CO2 and are so sustainable. Um, in, in a, just in numerous ways, but also just the market, the product line that you can establish with these, you know, products, everything from clothing to, you know, bath and spa to smokables. It's a fuel. It's, it's just the, the options are untapped for how we can actually forge positive change, not just in our locality, but hopefully far beyond that. Phenomenal answer by them. And let's throw into the, the social justice issue of people of color massively more incarcerated than white people when it comes to cannabis possession, which is absolute bullshit. Um, yes, so let's is. cut to the chase. Abs I mean, it's like a three to one disparity. Somebody having a bag of weed on them if they're white versus a black person and getting incarcerated. So it's about damn time that this becomes legalized. And, and I think everyone that watches this show knows where I stand when it comes to this. All right. So what's the plan where with a Alboro Cannabis Company and coming to market? Because, dude, I, I think you guys are going to freaking explode. I think the, 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 the marketplace and the community is going to freaking rally around you. You're going to have a line outside the door. I mean, can you give me the timeline for the layman's of when you guys could open retail or something like that? So, sure. So we, we don't have an exact timeline right now, but we have been looking, you know, in the last couple of months about expanding our business in several different ways. So what we did is, um, if I may, so our model cannabis company was a full service company that was products, a brand and services, but it became too much. So that's why I split it into two different companies, which is again, Virginia Big Cannabis Company in Waynesboro. It's uh 
It's uh, 10,000 square feet of warehouse space right now, and that handles everything for the farmer from seed through processing and potentially sale. So for Abermile Hemp, though, what we're doing, and that's its own monster, by the way, but so Abermile Cannabis Company, we're looking at a storefront now in the Crozet area and possibly beyond, possibly in Charlottesville as well. Um, we're hoping to get that up and running by late spring if everything works out well. Um, we continue to expand our e-commerce stuff and... Yeah, I mean, we, we're definitely moving forward. We are looking forward to events to come back so we can basically touch more people with everything we have and the knowledge of our team and everything else. So this is, this is I'm so excited. I'm getting goosebumps over here. So you're talking about events. You're talking about essentially like, lack of better phrase, you would have like a pop-up tent. And like the pop-up yes. tent, like we see it like at festivals or concerts, you guys are there, you're chilling, you're just becoming a brand ambassador and you're getting the word out to a very captive audience that's your target demo. That's essentially the plan, right? That is essentially the plan, and I like the way you put that, because one of my dreams for Abermile Cannabis Company is to kind of be the Virginia liaison and take under our wing other small Virginia-based hemp companies so we can basically show the world what we're made of. You know, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you know, we have the West Coast states like California, Colorado, Oregon that are great in what they do. And on the East Coast, Virginia has a very similar climate, really good soils, and I think we can, we can run with it ourselves and don't really need the assistance from the big boys, if you will, out West. Um, I love that idea. I love the idea. And, and it's like, to your credit, a rising tide is good for all ships. Nothing would be yeah. better as if you had like a cannabis trail, almost like breweries and wineries. And if there was a trail in Charlottesville and Central Virginia, almost like us wanting to visit Asheville, North Carolina to try their dope breweries. What if there was like 10 local Charlottesville cannabis companies in here and there was a cannabis trail and you were the essentially the godfather of the cannabis trail, similar to like King Family Vineyard is or Keswick sure. Vineyard is when it comes to vineyards and wineries. Is that kind of what you're thinking here? Because I totally see the vision. Kind of, yeah. You know, with breweries and wineries and such, we're, we're working on other products too, like um, a, 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 a drinkable line. Like we are working um, with some partners of, of ours, uh, Brand Strax and Sunnyfield Farm, which is in Augusta, to make a CBD seltzer water that we can, you know, bring, roll out to bars and restaurants and stuff for people who just want a CBD beverage or that want a mixed drink that has CBD in it, you know, through the soda water. Um, we're also working on a kombucha and some other things. So I see myself, I see us basically having, you know, probably a limited product line in several breweries and wineries that would cater to what they're doing. Um, obviously, in some of those places, maybe they're not into smokable products that much. So that would be one of the things I'd forego and maybe go a little heavier on baked goods or edibles and drinkables, if you will. Um, but that is something definitely in the future we want to look at. We currently do pop-ups now at Pro Renata Brewery in uh, Crozet on a sem somewhat regular basis outside and stuff, which is how we've grown a lot in the western part of Avamaro. And not to segue slightly, but something that, you know, just going back, Jerry, is something that means a lot to our business and everybody who works for us and with us at this point, we're hoping continues to be really deeply woven into our, 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 our vision, our mission statement is that we love this area and we really value the opportunity that we can grow a business that can also wrap around a diverse community of people who hopefully want to uh, enjoy purchasing our products, but hopefully working with us. So we really want to have a diverse workplace. We want to expand opportunities into any kind of um, marginalized um, community base that we can to you know, offer educational opportunities, work opportunities. We really feel like that this is beyond time to just really embrace and love all of our neighbors and give them the voice and the opportunities that so many people deserve. And so we're looking forward to growing more so we can keep offering those opportunities and, and build our diversity as, as a business um, just in any, any way that we can. So that means a lot to us. And in this community that values that um, so much, we're really glad to be a partner in that. I love it. This is why I have here. Yeah, dude, you out <laughs> you out kicked your coverage. I out kicked my coverage. You out kicked your coverage, dude. She's fantastic. Let me let me follow up with you. Let me follow up with you on that. That was a phenomenal answer here. How about as uh, entrepreneurs? You guys are entrepreneurs, small business owners, parents, right? Uh, yes. Let's talk about your journey as individuals in in uh, industry or a space that many saw even a couple years ago as freaking taboo, and now everyone's embracing. I mean, you know where I've stood on it the entire time here, but everybody, a lot of portion have seen it as taboo. 
I mean, can you talk about that as a mom and dad in a small and media, you know, business owners and as parents in a community where some folks are like even knocking? Can I say knocking? Is that safe to say? You can. You can. Yeah. It's a very small percentage of people that actually do that. But do you want to start with this one? You know, I'd say in a word, it's been hard to navigate um, up until more recently is, is the most efficient way to put it. Um, the openness and the openness to the progressive thinking is something that we are really grateful for um, because, you know, again, anyone who knows Joe and I, they know that I'm a big gardener. I am a big a believer in sustainability, in educating younger people of all ages, not just young kids, but, you know, our, our kids in college, our kids in those ages, you know, that are, these are the, these are the folks that are going to change the world, you know? And so for us to be able to have that shift of openness overall has been something we're really grateful for. We remain very grateful for that because again, the opportunities are endless for how we can make those connections to what hemp and cannabis can do, you know, on so many levels. Right. Um, so we're, we're thankful that the, the doors are opening more now and yes, that there's a lot more knocking. Um, there's a lot of questions, great questions. Um, a lot of, you know, and, and the amazing part is questions from people, you know, 18 to 80, you know, at not just, you know, young folks or older folks, but everybody and lots of different, um, you know, groups and age groups and um, ethnicities and, and backgrounds and, and everything. everything you can imagine. Yep. It's, it's amazing to see the thirst for the knowledge um, and the openness to receive it. Yeah. Um, so as people who really believe in these products and believe in the power they have to heal and help. Um, there really aren't any words to express how grateful we are for all of that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I used to work, I worked for the state of Virginia and the state of Florida for a long time before I got into this. And at first I was a little nervous, like you were saying, you know, because of it was taboo to a lot of people. But, you know, the background for me is my father has Agent Orange poisoning from Vietnam and CBD directly improved his quality of life. And I have met several tens of people, if you will, that it has improved the quality of their lives too, in terms of pain management or in anxiety. terms of uh, anxiety. Anxiety really helps them out. And the best thing for me, it isn't the dollar sign at the end of the day. It's people that come back to me over and over again and say, hey, this really helped me. I had a gentleman come to me who bought one of our products and said that the pain medication that were the, the pain product, not medication, but product that we gave him was better than any opioid that came from him or got was given to him by the local hospital. Right. which to me is amazing. And I use that story out all the time because the fact that it makes that person smile and makes their level of comfort in their lives better is really all it means to me. That's basically the thing. And the ability for people to reduce dependencies on things like narcotics and opioid driven products, none of us need to restate what kind of epidemic we have going on with that. And how this can help. And to see people like his, I mean, everyone from his dad on out to, you know, so many wonderful, amazing people that we've been fortunate enough to meet through this business and continue to meet. But the ability to, to see these people, you know, get themselves to a more natural, sustainable, um, productive and functional way of life and not be relying on big pharma products that are just not doing them any favors yeah you know to see that shift again it's huge it's, it's so powerful yeah it, it really is and I everything from pets to anxiety to pet i mean pets i mean i can't we even have an animal that has started using his leg again that he hasn't used in three years due to cbd biscuits and, dog biscuits and so again it's just it's 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 so powerful to see this kind of shift and i think it's long overdue i think we both do oh, yeah. I, th I think we all, all three of us do all three of us. Yeah. I mean, this is like a freaking no-brainer. This is the most obvious decision ever. And the fact that it's taken COVID and, and municipalities running out of money to make this legal is just, I guess it's good because it, it's finally becoming a reality. Uh, Joe, what can we expect? You said late spring with the store in Crozet. I mean, what do we expect with that? Well, I'm still in talks. My fingers are crossed. We're in Me talks too. About that. I'm, I'm working with the county on permitting, which is fun. And uh, we're working through all of that now. Oil is good to go. We would like to see this store be a CBD hemp-based store for now, and in the future, once cannabis reform is completely you just pivot. Is completed and legal, then we would just expand into a dispensary sort of setting for the Crozet area. Um, something you touched on before, I wanted to go back to, if it's okay. Sure. You know, we're talking about disparity between 
you know, African Americans and other people in jail for for you know marijuana stuff. The one good thing about this law that's coming is it will expunge all of that. Like if you if you went to jail or you have a, cr a criminal record for cannabis, according to what the bill says as of now, which could change, I guess. But you know what 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 they're trying to get to is it would expunge a lot of those um, a lot of those people. convictions. Right, the yeah. convictions would go away. Now, I'm sure that there's ins and outs to that, like what else was involved in those convictions. But for a lot of people, a lot of folks who were basically, you know, wrongly incarcerated for something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and this is a down. huge step forward. Because those people, you know, the, anytime anyone gets incarcerated, they lose the ability to really put forward a lot to their communities because they're stigmatized for the rest of their lives, which is not okay. How many people are in jail that, you know, could cure cancer or do some, you know, great thing for the world as a whole, but they can't because they got incarcerated for marijuana. That's just not okay. We're the same page, same page. So is, is this, um, and you're crushing this dude, um, is this, is the model um, three to four points of sale that initially focus on hemp around Charlottesville and Central Virginia strategically spaced, and then end of, 20, end of 2023 or early 2024, whenever the Virginia Assembly and the governor get on the same page, and then they allow cannabis, then you just tweak it a little bit, and then cannabis will be a product also sold? Yes, absolutely. So the proposal on the table right now says January of, uh, basically July of 2022, recreational cannabis will be legal in Virginia. Okay. January of 2023, retail will begin. Now those dates are definitely still a moving they're target. Fluid. So they're, they're fluid. They're fluid. The original proposal was around there. Now, depending on, I mean, and I understand it's going to take a little while to get cannabis completely integrated into the state of Virginia or the Commonwealth of Virginia, because there's a lot of things and you have to look at there. So I have no problem with it taking that long. That's fine. You know, and, but I do think that, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. And when we do move into cannabis, we will still offer hemp products as well, because the, the beauty there is this, you know. I don't have time to smoke a bunch of cannabis anymore. <laughs> so if I could say that, like I have children and a job and a business, I don't have time for that. But I do like the effects of the, you know, the calming. I have anxiety too. I wear it on my sleeve. But like the use of hemp products really calms me down. And so there will always be a market for people who don't really want to have the overwhelming effects of cannabis. They want, you know, of marijuana, if you will, but they still want to, you know, be included in having to benefit. Yeah. And I think there's that room the hemp, for both. right? There's room yeah, for both there. Of course, hemp products continue to be a force along with cannabis and yes i'm sure that when it goes legal it, there's going to be a little you know movement in the markets but i still think it's going to there's be plenty of clientele that want to continue to use hemp-based products i do not to mention that if 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 the virginia government the governmental pieces play their cards right and they're smart and i hope that some of them will hear those words heart in a heartfelt <laughs> expression if they play their cards right hemp and cannabis could do a lot for the agricultural base oh of yeah the state yeah, I mean, it could take it could take an industry. It could take farmers that are afterthoughts and 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 basically redheaded stepchildren in 2021 and reprioritize them. Yep. Yes, it can. And I'm sorry, but our farmers, along with our educational system, our farmers need our support. They need us to get behind them. They are the reason we have food on our tables, clothes on our back, you know, wood in our fireplaces, you know, you name it. And they have long since been in a high need of appreciation and support that that I think could use large improvement. Amen. So I'm hopeful that the Virginia government embraces that opportunity full force. And I'm pretty sure they are. I think they I'm will, sure. too. I, I agree. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. 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 OK, we'll close on this. You guys have crushed this. OK, so um, where do we go from here? OK, two part question, two part question. I, I love the Albemarle, I love the brand on your hat. Albemarle Thank Cannabis you. Company, Albemarle Cannabis Company is as good a brand as you could possibly have in this market. I appreciate it. Um, I sincerely mean that. This is what I do for, I sincerely mean that. Um, I, I love you guys. The community loves you guys. Your product is going to be banging, whatever it is. I agree with you. It's just like pizza. Some people want an artisan pizza. Some people want stuffed crust. Some people want deep dish. Some people want pan. Just like hemp and cannabis. Okay, it's everybody has a different thing that they want. Okay. I'm know we're in the future, I would love to do a pizza and cannabis delivery service. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So he's got a ton of ideas. Okay, what does the marketplace look like in two or three years locally, and what does Albaro Cannabis Company look like in two or three years locally? 
Well, I think that there's going to definitely be a lot more growth in the hemp and cannabis world in the area moving forward in the next two to three years. We're going to see other businesses pop up, and I wish all of them the best of luck, and I hope that we can all work together in like a loosely or a loose co-op kind of setting, you know, because I, I do feel that in this industry, the only way for any of us to win is to win together. Yep. And if you start undercutting people and doing, you know, other business things that probably aren't the best, it's probably not the best for all of us as a whole. You know, we need to show the world that, you know, any any state, not just Virginia, but we need to show the world that when you let us do these things that we want to do, that we do them in a professional, collaborative, collaborative manner, yep. you know, that does nothing but positive, positive things, you know, and nothing negative comes out of it. And that's really the goal. For Admiral Cannabis, you know, we want to continue doing what we do. We want to expand and make sure that enough people or everybody can can get our products as well as other Virginia-based products, you know, as we move forward. We want to continue to embrace as many local artisans yep. in this community. That and we want to hire people. so <laughs> many talents to bring and support our local business space because we have a lot of really gifted people in this community and they can do some amazing things. And if we can continue to also weave them into... As, you know the growth that we hope to experience then hopefully again like he said together we win you know yeah and you, you guys know, are on the cusp do- you guys are on the cusp of booming i mean i can tell through this damn screen that you guys you you guys can tell you're on the cusp of booming i we all know you're on the cusp do you feel that way I do. I can't. I don't sleep anymore. So there's that. So I definitely feel lack of sleep and like that. So yes, yeah. it, it would be both of them. I think that we're doing pretty well, and I think that I think that, that you know the future looks bright. And I just want to again make sure that we you know include as many people in the community as we can to really push forward and make it the best we can make it. You know, and that's it. Second part of question because I freaking love you guys here, and I think this topic is important here. When Albemarle Cannabis Company has its locations, the hemp footprints around Charlottesville and Central Virginia, the points of sale, the storefronts. Yep. How, how long does your instinct say before cannabis is available for purchase in those stores? And then the second part, Joe, because I'm sure you've thought about this is, what does the footprint, the experience look like when you go in there? I mean, is it going to be like, is it going to be like a tap house with beer? I mean, what's that footprint, that experience look like when you walk in? Two part question. Sure. So- so I feel that for to the first part of that question, make sure I got all that. So the first part of the question, I think after we start getting at least our flagship or any other individual store up, I still think we're looking at about a year and a half to, well, probably two years. I'm going to go a little further out. Two years for cannabis integration. There is a lot to do there in terms of permitting and being able to you know, get a permit because I'm sure they're going to be restrictive in terms of the number of permits and so on and so forth. One of the things in the bill is also that each individual county – has to agree that they want cannabis in their county. Otherwise, they can opt out and they do not need to have it. I'm pretty sure Albemarle will be on board with this. I, I really don't Cause see Because Albemarle is fighting right now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Albemarle is fighting right now on the Board of Supervisors for a medical facility in Albemarle County. So if they're chopping yes. at the bit for medical, that would mean yep. if the tea leaves would say that retail is going to be allowed. The, yeah. can- the cannabis tea leaves say that it will yeah. be. Yeah, right. Cannabis Nicely leaves. done. Yeah. Nicely done. Your pun was better than my pun. <laughs> that, that's actually pretty good. That you was know, good. And our, our dream for our experience when you enter the store is we want it to feel like a living room. You know, like I want to have couches in a sitting area for people. Once cannabis actually, once marijuana becomes legal and ab- av- and it's available to purchase re- in a retail sense, there are rules and regulations in other states I think we're going to have to follow. One of those is you're going to have to have a separate room, which is a waiting room, where you get carded and ID to assure you're over the age of 21, and you get a number because only a limited amount of people are allowed into the area where the cannabis is sold at a time. Huh. Now, once that once that becomes a reality, you know, I do think that one thing I'm looking at doing is keeping, you know, in each individual space, we would have a hemp area and a cannabis area. So even if that's true, where you have to, you know, take a number, if you will, to get into the cannabis room, you're still would be able to, you know, shop for hemp products in the first room before moving into the secondary area. So that's kind of what, and I want it to be like, I want it to be classy, if I will. I you know, the one thing that we don't want to do and that we won't do is I don't want to ever have a storefront that sells, you know, a lot of paraphernalia, if you will. That's not what we're about. I don't. I don't need that. I want to use local artisans, maybe for some simple, simple pieces that you can use for smokable cannabis and flour. But I don't want to become a, a head shop. No offense, to all you head shop guys. I love all of you, but you know, I, I don't. We don't want to do that. We want to stick more to product quality, information about products, and you know, a, a higher, not a higher end, but you know what I'm saying. Like, sure. Like, local artisan quality products is what we want to do. Yeah, we want a comfortable quality community feel of an experience you know i'm 
I, I, I also hope that the opportunity is taken that, you know, there are a lot of models that have been implemented out West and I hope that we can emulate some of that, but I also hope that we can go progressively beyond that as the East coast um, and really kind of show them how it's supposed to be done. I you know? love it. I love it. <laughs> we, we, we are all about family. We're all about community. You know, that's what drove Joe and I to move here almost 15 years ago. And what honestly will keep me here for all of my days. Um, yep. It is, it is literally the heartbeat of what we do and why we do it. And so I really think we're poised to make, to, to kind of springboard off of some of those great models but I think we can. I think we can do better, and yeah. I certainly hope that op those opportunities are taken. And the one thing we'll always say is we don't know everything. I don't know everything about growing cannabis and selling cannabis and doing and doing the hemp stuff. I don't. But I do know that I'm honest, and if I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you I don't know. Right. And I will always go to outside help within the area to find out what I need to find out if I don't know what it is. And I take a lot of pride in that because the last thing I want to do to anybody is is give them you know false a false sense of security about you know, growing hemp, for example, and that kind of thing. Like, I definitely want them to understand the caveats, the positives and negatives and all of that. And I think that's another thing that, that we strive for is honesty to our, our customers, clients, and community about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we think it should be done. Okay. So... Absolutely. You're getting serious props from the viewers. Teresa Davis says, these guys are great. I love Albemarle Cannabis Company. I said we know her. <laughs> Kelly, who helped make this happen. She says, I love their product. Kelly Jackson. Um, Chris Thacker is watching. Guys, I didn't know about Albemarle Cannabis Company, but I will support them as soon as they open their doors. Thank you for this interview, Jerry. Grace is watching in Richmond. These people are absolutely amazing. I've watched them start to finish. Jen Corby, Alan Ossoff, welcome to the show. You're getting more props here. This is from Spencer Gomez. He says, I will be the first customer at Almaro Cannabis Company. Just let us know when they open their doors. I mean, how's, close on this. How's this make you feel, guys? Makes me feel great. And they, can, they don't have to wait till our doors open. They can go to abnormalcannabiscompany.com and shop <laughs> online for whatever you guys want. Um, and, you know, we're, we're always looking for new ideas as well. So if somebody has a new idea for a product that they might want to see in the hemp and cannabis industry moving forward, they can reach us anytime via online or Facebook, Instagram, whatever, or Twitter, whatever you guys want. And just let us know what your thoughts and feelings are and see if we can try to help a dream come true. Kelly Lewis is watching their show. Kelly Lewis, I, I can vouch for her. She goes, can I get their email address? I would love to work with these folks. Oh, absolutely. That, see, that's what, that's what, that's. There's that's more what, of this coming on right now. How should we handle this? Should we put in the, in the package, should I put your email address in there, Joe? Should I do that? How should I handle this? We have an, in, you just, they can email us at info at abermarlcannabiscompany.com. Okay. And that all goes to, Ready? Leanne. <laughs> I knew. I knew that. I knew that. A bunch of other stuff. So Leanne is a full <laughs> has a full time job, and now she's my executive office manager. She gave herself her own title, which I think is funny because I don't call myself an executive, but that's okay because I can't schedule anything. I just let her do it. So there's that. I'm the I'm the uh, I'm the organizational brain behind <laughs> most of. I'm the I'm the. Ah! That's yeah, me, so, it's yeah. the same with my wife and I. Um, you are the glue and the foundation and the critical component, Leanne, and you somehow uh, manage to survive and choose to survive. You choose to survive with people like Joe, and for that, we're eternally grateful. And, and I'm the same way, dude. I say to my wife, I'm like, I don't know how you deal with this crazy ADHD, <laughs> like, organized chaos world, and she just does. She just well, I don't know if that's fair, though, Jerry. You've known me forever, and you know I'm a kook half the time as it is. So, I mean, I, you know. I don't think you're a kook. I think I, every kook was called a visionary at one time. So what you are is you're a visionary. You see ahead of the game. You just need someone like Leanne to help you get to the finish line. Well, and Jerry, after almost uh, 20 years of being together, I wouldn't change it any – I wouldn't have it any other way. This but man is my best friend. She's prettier than me. And there he is, is my partner in life <laughs> and – and to see him, to see him this fulfilled with something that has meant so much to him for so long, um, it's it. It there's again. It I'm not, I've never short on words. Anyone who knows me will will vouch for that. But there, it leaves me pretty speechless. It took me a long time. Here. What she's saying is, it took me a long time to find the thing that I really truly believe that I'm doing, that I believe in. And so it's something I plan to continue doing. I don't really see myself doing anything else. So. 
And, and that's awesome. And the, and the amazing thing about this is we are like this freaking close to an incredible like uh, line of passing, of passing in a very important line for your dream. And I'm so happy for you guys. The community is. I like, I, I, I'm like, my heart is warm. I'm, I, I think your future is like so freaking bright and I can't wait to see it like shine. I sincerely mean that, guys. I wanted to do 15 minutes. We went 30 minutes and change and that's because you guys are freaking awesome. Um, oh. I, I will reach out again. I will reach out again. Absolutely. We'll look, we'll no problem. Anytime. We'll okay. Thank you. Thank you have a good day. Yep. You too. See you later. You have a good one, Joe. Bye guys. Yep. Um, Thank you. they are freaking awesome. Keith Smith, we're going to you in a matter of moments. Awesome. Right. Can you hit the like button and share the show for Leanne and, and, and Joe? I mean, and I'm going to straight up tell you right now, this is an emerging booming industry that literally will have the economic impact on Charlottesville and Central Virginia that breweries and vineyards and wineries have had. I'm going to repeat this. Charlottesville and Central Virginia in three to five years will be brand identified by the following. Are you ready? Vineyards, breweries, Live music, restaurants, and cannabis. That will be the brand identity of Charlottesville and Central Virginia in five years. I will repeat it again. Breweries, vineyards, live music, restaurants, and cannabis will be how people outside Charlottesville and Central Virginia see the marketplace that is Charlottesville and Central Virginia and why folks outside Central Virginia will choose to spend their hard-earned dollars within Central Virginia. Mark it down. Mark it down. And the people that are, that are investing themselves, their skill set, their capital, years of their lives, like Joe and Leanne, those are the ones that are going to win. Those are the ones that are going to get financial uh, windfall. Mark it down. Mark it down. Mark it down. And before we get to Keith Smith, I can assure you, I can assure you, because I know, because I hear, and I'm talking to the folks, I can assure you, Judah, you yawn. Is, is, is everything okay over there? Yeah. You sure? Is there anything I can do to help you out? No. Okay. I don't want to bore you here. Um, I can assure... You sure about that, J-Dubs? Yeah. You want to go to the Judah can? If you want me to. Um, I can assure you there will be other brands that emerge. Assure you. All right, let's reach out to Keith Smith so we can get an insight into what's happening tomorrow on Real Talk. Kelly Lewis, huge opportunity for you here. Um, Keith Smith on the line. Keith, you are live in Charlottesville, Central Virginia, on the I Love Seville Network. What is on your mind? Oh, Keith, I've closed close to $10,000 in the last 48 hours for the telethon. Never doubt in my mind, brother. Literally. I closed, half, I closed 5K this morning. Uh, you know, just keep on rocking and rolling. I, I, but I want to take a minute and start off and say thank you to you. You know, when I uh, post and I share this show, I always say, get yourself some learning. And I, and I truly mean that. I, I just listened intently for the last 30 minutes and got an education about cannabis and and these awesome folks that you just interviewed so um they're gonna they're gonna win they're gonna do great and do you know why i know they're gonna do great because they're local they're hard working and they're honest and they're focused absolutely our chemistry is working every morning three things show up on my phone be professional and that's what they are be caring that's what they are and be trustworthy and anybody who's in business can focus on those three things no matter what your business is right in life in general right but particularly in business in a small business you will be super successful but uh thank you for the education thank you for the long form format because otherwise you wouldn't be able to be learning from awesome folks like that i think i think um keith i'm going to throw this out there and i'm already hearing this happen i think we're going to have specialists on this entire supply chain and we're going to see even specialists from a realtor standpoint. We'll see specialists from uh, a soil analysis standpoint. We'll be specialists from advertising agencies that cater to the industry. 
Um, sure. I think it's going to be an entire ecosystem and supply chain similar to breweries and, and vineyards and wineries. What does your beautiful brain tell you? You know, what my beautiful brain tells me is what I started off is, is I got to pay attention to it more, which I have not, to be honest with you, um, and, and listen to the, your long format show and get some education on it. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I took a quick research, not cannabis, but uh, hemp's been in the state of Virginia back in, started in 1619. So this isn't nothing new as far as the hemp side of things. Again, that's way out of my knowledge base. But I, I just know that these folks are going to be super successful because they follow those three B's. And I'm excited to watch them and excited to, to help them in any way that we can and uh, move forward. So I'm excited about it. Keith Smith, guys, live from Yes Realty Partners headquarters at Ix Park. This gentleman, one of the executives of, of Yes Realty Partners. Tomorrow, your talk show, Real Talk on the I Love Seville Network at 10.15 in the morning. My friend, I'm excited. I am. We're going to bring, we're going to bring in Rachel Burns. We're, we're going to kind of take off. Oh, yeah. We're going to take it. You, it's sitting in your email. I just sent it to you. Okay. I love, I love uh, Rachel Burns. Yeah, yeah. And, but we're going to not focus on stats and numbers. We're going to focus on what we do as real estate agents and real estate professionals to give back. And so that's what Rachel is like a rock star in the volunteer world. So we're going to talk a little bit about that on how we give back and how other folks can give back. And again, just listening to the folks that you just interviewed, they're all about giving back. I can, I could just hear that by the words that they were speaking. And then the second half of the show, um, we're going to focus on our time machine idea we came up with and, and kind of promote that a little bit, but I know you're excited about. So uh, we'll show out some pictures of what we're trying to do and accomplish on the land trust. And, and then I might take a little executive producer privilege slash grandpa privilege, new grandpa privilege to talk about our new granddaughter who will be born tomorrow. So Awesome. Awesome. Let me ask you this. Fun show. Let me ask you this. Um, $150,000 for a piece of property on 10th Street. 10th and West. 10th and West. Do we know the exact address of that? It's on the intersection of 10th and West. I, okay. I, so if you, I've got all kinds of visuals coming for tomorrow. But okay, it's on intersection, the intersection of 10th and West. Where's the second piece of property? Second piece of property, and I know where that beautiful brain is going. The second piece of property is on the corner of uh, Monticello and Carlton. Okay, so that's the second on the opposite piece of property side. is on the corner of Monticello and Carlton. Correct. And is that in, that's in the city of Charlottesville? Both are in the city of Charlottesville. Both we will be reproducing the success that we did on Nassau Street. 1,500 square foot, three bedrooms, two baths, solar, net zero. Uh, our goal is to get out of around $200,000. Construction costs are going a little bit through the roof, as you well know. Sure, sure. So but, the, the intersection of 10th and West, the dirt, just the dirt is 150 k Correct. Okay. How about just the dirt at the corner of Monticello and Carlton? How much is that? About the same, yeah, same number. That's the reason I was pushing you when we first came up with this idea for three. So if, if we can hit three hundred thousand dollars, you can buy two pieces of property. If we hit three hundred thousand dollars, we can buy two pieces of property, and we can build a uh, twelve. Well, hold it, eleven homes. Eleven homes, and the first one intersection of Tenth and West is five homes. That's correct. Five homes. Okay, six and, and, and six first on the one. Other one. Okay, and six on the other one. Six on the other. You know what? I want to go balls don't, to the don't, wall. Don't, don't I, do I, it. I, I don't do I, it. I think I might. Don't dude, do I, I honestly, I, I, I will say don't this. Don't do on it. Friday, I'll hold you to it. Okay. On Friday, I talked yeah. about this on the I Love Seville show. Yeah. By close Thanks, of, by, by close of business at 6 p.m., I had four companies offer donations. On I, Monday, on Monday, I had, I woke up to two other voicemails from businesses. So I don't know. I let, I, 300K, well, I want to give that some thought. Well, look, more is always better. Look, the, the, some, the reality of it is um, with COVID, and you talk about this on your show all the time, um, you know, the city's budget is not in the world's greatest shape, it's right? It's in the so crapper. We, 
Yeah, so we, you know, you and I put our heads together. We knew at the beginning of, of this COVID that money was not going to be able to come from the jurisdictions to help us do this. And that's the reason why we're reaching out to the to the community to help us um, raise money to purchase uh, this or both, hopefully both properties so we can produce it. And if you have never been, if you live in the city of Charlottesville and you never drove down the street of Nassau Street, do yourself a favor and do that. They're super cool units, very modern. They are basically from a market perspective. We sold those particular units for $215,000. They're worth about three hundred and fifty. dollars Right in the market on the market space in the open market space. So they already so, got the, the people that took the, the people got that, that bought the Nassau Street homes through the Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust. You're saying already have a hundred k or so of equity. Well, they do and they don't. Right. So part of the Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust is is that when they go to sell their home, they have to sell it to another eighty percent AMI buyer. So so area income. So the, the, the beauty about what we do with the land trust, it's forever for affordable, plus it builds equity for folks, right? Um, so these that these homes will always, because we do a 99 year lease on the land and it automatically extends, these homes will always be affordable. They will never go, they will never not be affordable. And that's what really makes what we do a little bit different than some of the other nonprofits as we as you stole my silver buckshot from time to time, but that's what it is. There's no silver bullet to this, but there's multiple solutions to it. it just happens to be one of them. It does. It isn't the panacea. It isn't the one that's going to solve solve it across the board. But it sure as hell gets us going in the right direction. And a little thing: we are negotiating with a, with a large developer and builder that we might be able to put between fifty and seventy five of these in. Um, Albemarle County. So we're super excited about it. Uh, I'm going to show you a, I'm going to send you a text message real quick. Um, we're doing this live, huh? Look yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm giving you a, a suggestion. Okay. Here. I just I'm, sent you I'm a text. Tell me if you it. got that text message. Okay. Well, hold on. I, somebody once told me when I do this to shut my phone off. So that's what I did. Oh, is it off? Not on airplane mode? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keith Smith, my friend, tomorrow, 10, 15 a.m. on the I Love Seville Network. It's real talk. Hey, hey, by the way, I'm very proud to call you a friend. I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Uh, it hasn't not. come in yet, but I, I had my phone shut off, so I had to let it get get it booked up. But what, uh, you'll excite me later when I see it. Okay, all right. This is the question I'm going to ask in. you here. Um, tomorrow at 10, 15 a.m., guys, Keith Smith on the I Love Seville Network, not only Tuesdays at 10, 15 a.m., but Fridays at 10, 15 a.m., on the I Love Seville network as well. The dude is fantastic. It's presented by the Yes Team Realtors. Um, all right, here's a serious question for you, and I want you to dig into the heart for your answer on this. If you and I are able to do a telethon with the help of a lot of incredible people in this community, and we're able to even hit, just call it 150 k and we can buy this piece of property, this land, the land trust can buy, um, at the intersection of 10th and West, and five homes can be built on there. What is that going to mean to Keith Smith? Wow. That's a great question. I don't know. You, you, you work so hard at trying to get this stuff, you know, and, and it's true. I mean, you don't really, we just, you don't think about you. You just think about giving back. Um, and I just, my heart would be just super pleased. I, I, you know, it's, this is a, a, a thing, a rock that, that I've been pushing uphill for quite some time, actually 10 years. And we're just we're just super excited that this is actually starting to happen. And all the tea leaves or all the cannabis leaves are all lining up. And, and uh, you like that, huh? That was all good. The can that was good. I, I listened to the show. All that was the funny. cannabis leaves are are, are aligning um, on this. And it's just everybody's doing it. And it's just it's just heartwarming to know that it's moving forward. One never does one never does this. Rachel doesn't do this. You don't do this. All these hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of people who do all this volunteer work behind the scenes. It's never about them. It's always about somebody else and helping the other guy. And that's I just love being part of it. Love being chairman of it. I, I just get overwhelmed by the input that people are doing. And and so I, I that was probably the best answer I could give, my friend.
That was a great answer. That was a great answer. I still didn't get your text, so I don't know what the heck you're sending me, my friend. Well, my, my, my t you handled it well. You didn't even, uh, I, I, was, I, I texted you, show emotion on this answer, and you just did. <laughs> <laughs> my text says right here, it says show emotion on this answer. Yeah, right. Look at this. You just, you know, my wife has been gone, and we're trying to take over this role of, okay, Keith, this is how you need to handle be, this. Be sensitive, Smith. I am sensitive. I'm a sensitive you are sensitive. Guy. You're a very sensitive very person. Sensitive. You are a sensitive guy. You're a sensitive person. All right. Sir, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Oh, wait. A... Tomorrow, right? 10 a.m. I'll see you? I am. I mean, we're going to have Rachel. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. It... Rachel's just a great, great fun. And then we're going we're gonna to do that. I will tell you. If Rachel was in person, we probably all would be drinking cocktails tomorrow. But it's, it's via Skype, isn't it? It is via Skype. And maybe she might have a cocktail. I don't know. <laughs> 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 but I'll tell you one, one quick thing before you, you, you move me off on to wrap the show wrap up. I almost texted you yesterday. We have to have a conversation what we're wearing on the 12th. Oh. And I, I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm out. Um, I don't know if I should say it or not, but I'm out searching for night. So 1970s uh, powder blue tuxes with the Whoa. big front, all that stuff. So watch out. I might, I might, you might be wearing, uh, some pretty cool outfit on the on the twelfth. So wait, are we going as Chip and Dale strippers? Is that what you're? Is that what we're doing? Oh, oh get your mind out of the. Game. Okay, I mean that's what no. it sounded like you're doing. There's suspenders no, and no, okay. No, no, no. You're such a kid. Okay. Just Google <laughs> 1970s tuxedo. Okay, I will. I will. It's big rough, like you know, John Travolta stuff, right? Is this is this sense? Susan's idea? Is this Susan Steinmart's no, idea? It's totally my idea. Totally I think idea. I saw an I, email, Susan, for you about this in my inbox somewhere. Look, either that, I'm going to make you wear spandex again. So, you know, <laughs> my wife bought me some tights. Oh, that's a story for I another day. I do not think the viewing public. No, they don't. Wants to see tights anymore. Or I don't want to sleep in the guest bedroom anymore. So I got to stop talking right now. Um, Keith, I, 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 I very much enjoy this. I'll see you tomorrow, homie. Always enjoy every minute of your time with you. See you later, brother. Thanks. You too, Keith. Take care. Bye. Uh, Keith's great people. So the 12th of February, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., um, we have a chance to raise some money to buy some dirt, um, a piece of land. And how, this makes it tangible for you, okay? $150,000, if we can raise one hundred and fifty k. The Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust can buy a piece of property on the intersection of 10th and West in the city of Charlottesville. That piece of property will yield five homes, affordable housing. If we're somehow able to generate 300,000 on the 12th of February from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the Charlottesville Time Machine Telethon, then the Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust will be able to buy a second piece of property and the second piece of property is on the corner of Monticello and Carlton. And the second piece of property will yield six units of affordable housing. And if you combine that with the first, you get a total of 11 units of affordable housing. 12th of February, 10 a.m. Please put it in your calendar. I'm asking you please to do that. Let's get your phone in your hand now, please. And put it in your calendar, please. Please create an event on your iPhone. Create an event. 12th of February, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I'm going to ask you to watch the telethon, let folks know about it, and I need 3,000 people to donate 50 bucks each. And we'll minimum get the piece of property on 10th and West. I'd really like to get 6,000 people to donate 50 bucks each, 6,000 citizens in Central Virginia who say they're committed to affordable housing. I want to see you put your money where your mouth is, and 6,000 people pony up 50 bucks each. If 6,000 people give 50 bucks each, we will crowdsource the purchase of two plots of land in the city of Charlottesville, something that's never been done in the history of Charlottesville, Virginia. This has never been done in the history of Charlottesville, Virginia. Crowdsourcing the purchase of land to create a lasting legacy of affordable housing in a community that's quickly becoming rich and unaffordable. These are the type of endeavors and efforts that will be written about in Charlottesville history books for decades and generations to come. It's your time to shine. 12th of February. One more item out of the notebook. Virginia 
Um, got a squeaker over Georgia Tech over the weekend. They got Syracuse on the dock at 7 o'clock tip tonight. This Virginia men's basketball team, looking like the best in the Atlantic Coast Conference, maybe Florida State, maybe Virginia Tech are in the thick. Virginia Tech just suspended its second best player indefinitely, so the Hokies should see a slip in talent with their second best player suspended indefinitely for off the court issues. This Virginia men's basketball team, if we can get there, could be on the short list for national championship contender. And for those that hate on Kia Clark, and for some reason a lot of people like to hate on Kia Clark, I don't understand it. Kia Clark is the most important player on this team. He's five foot freaking seven, and he's got the heart of a lion. He's playing a sport where height is critically important, and he's five foot seven. And people still hate on this guy. Yes, he had a bad game against Georgia Tech. Yes, he did not shoot the ball well. But you know who was relied upon to hit the game-winning bucket, the go-ahead bucket against Georgia Tech? It was Kia Clark. I think he went one for nine from the field. I was watching the game from my wife, with my wife. The one basket he made was the one that put the team ahead. He also had eight assists, and in crunch time, he locked up that Georgia Tech point guard, that scrappy guy who could stroke it from downtown, who was a cocky little SOB playing the air guitar. You know who I'm talking about? Kia Clark locked that boy up. Locked him up. So for all those that hate about Kia Clark, realize that he's five foot seven. He's a tremendous overachiever. He's playing a sport that prioritizes height, and he does not have it. He's the engine and heartbeat of the team. He's undoubtedly the most important player on the roster. I didn't say the most talented. I said the most important. And Virginia basketball is going to go as Kia Clark goes. So why don't we support the guy instead of hating on him? I don't get the hate to this kid. He's a kid. He ain't even a pro. He ain't even a paid player. And people are hating on the dude. I don't get it. He's good. We need him. All right, that's the show. My name is Jerry Miller. Thank you for joining us on a Monday. We're back tomorrow, Tuesday at 10.15 a.m. with Real Talk on the I Love Seville Network. You guys be easy.